you read that title correctly. Why I think that there is a, not just less of hundred of true uh, followers or disciples of Christ's teaching in the world, but maybe there is none. So, if you go uh, and search, you'll find out that Christianity is the largest religion and it has 2.4 uh, billion of members. But if you truly understand what is the Christ teaching about, you'll find out that none of those people are actually true followers. They are just a subscribers to, to religion. Christianity or being a Christian is just a label. It doesn't mean much. So you believing that God exists, you going to a church, you praying uh, and doing similar things like uh, lighting a candle, buying a cross, uh, doing prayer on the rosary, they're helpful, but they don't mean much and they will not secure your place in heaven and doesn't make you true follower of the Christ teaching. So being baptized doesn't make you a Christ follower or follower of Christ teaching. Uh, going to church doesn't do as well. It's a very similar like uh, going uh, to a gym, subscribing, paying subscription, but actually never going to exercise. And that's what kind of 99.999% of Christians do. So they rarely practice what's the teaching. So there are two things in the teaching which in today's society are kind of quite hard. So first, giving up of usage of money. And the second is even harder. It's kind of deals with the suppressing of your natural instinct to protect yourself is true Christ followers don't fight back. And that's kind of embedded in the New Testament. Through the history, true Christians died in worst possible deaths, being tortured by horrifying torments. And they didn't fight back. They surrendered to the God, having the strong belief that they will end up in heaven. So I know you won't believe me. So I'll try to break down those two main things about money and then surrendering or not fighting back. So first about the money. So in one uh, verse uh, in New Testament, it says you can't serve two masters because uh, you will hate one and love another. And you can't serve both God and money. So, which means that all the Christians should live the life without money. And I, I know, I know it's hard and almost impossible to, to live that way, but it, it is doable. And there is another verse, maybe the Lord was not precise enough for you. So at one occasion, uh, Christ was spreading his teaching. And then at, at some point, a rich person came to him and he said, Oh Lord, uh, like uh, I'm following all the commandments. I've done this and, and I do the charities and I'm kind of quite good. But how can I enter the heaven? So Christ told him, sell all your riches, everything you have, 
and come and follow me. So this guy turned his back and he left. And Christ said, it is easier for camel, which is basically ship rope, it's called camel, to go into eye of the needle than it is for rich person to go to the heaven. Which means you can't have money, you can't be ruled by money. And as it says, although they tried uh, again to dance around and say, no, 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 money is not root of all evil, uh, loving the money is root of all, all evil. But Christ specifically said, sell all you have and come and follow me. Isn't that clear enough? So that's the first thing. So now we are coming to the second point, which says you should not fight back. You should let evil people to do to you whatever they want, which is kind of very hard pill for everyone to swallow. Even if it means that it will give you like a, some kind of promise of heaven. So why I'm came, claiming that? That's not true, isn't it? But in a scripture, there are few stories, again, which clearly point exactly that. You should completely surrender and you should not fight back. So, first story is, or first part, is the teaching when Christ said, if someone slaps you, turn around other cheek. If someone asks the shirt from you, give him even the coat, give him everything. So if someone tries to rob you, don't fight back. So there are few proverbs, and this is not limited to Christians. This is also uh, applicable to the Jews as well. In the Proverbs 25, from 21 to 22, it says, If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. If he, in doing this, you will heap burning coal on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Matthew 5, 38 to 39. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn them the other cheek also. Matthew 5, 43, 44. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who prosecute you. One more story. So, when during the Christ teaching, when he was teaching around and his disciples, they saw someone who is teaching the similar. And said, they rushed to, to Christ and said, teacher, teacher, like that man uh, is doing the same thing like you do, like going around and preaching about um, the peace. Should we stone him to the death? And Christ replied, truly, my children, you don't know what you do. Uh, just leave him alone. If he's teaching the same like I do, he's not my enemy, he's my friend. And even to enemies, you should be good. So then he gave a, a story about seeds of 
wheat and uh, seeds of weed which are embedded so he was explaining that people should not try to pick out weed out of wheat because in the process they will also destroy they will also destroy the the, the good seeds so lord describe just leave those people alone and at the end they will get what they deserve and again that's kind of quite hard to swallow because what's kind of most unbelievable in that teaching is that you have have to have faith so strong that you kind of uh, disregard your instinct of survival and you say okay I, I don't care about my life anymore because I believe if I follow this teaching I will end up in heaven so at this point I can almost kind of guess what you're thinking if uh, that is all truth then if you put a mad wolf into room full of sheep or lambs at the end only wolf will left and at the end he will die too and also if I think about the history to stop Nazis and fascists progressing my grandfather was not throwing bread at them he was taking his rifle and going into war but Christian teaching is a different and it says if you really want to go to heaven and reach heaven you have to surrender and to the God and that's the only path so now I know that you can think a lot of things and we can kind of discuss it's quite difficult to surrender when only thing you see is this life and you don't have any single proof that there is a something else so in that sense there is a something else which is worth uh, remembering eye for eye makes everyone blind so if there is a some kind of conflict between two parties regardless uh, two persons two groups of people or two countries there always must be a, either one who will win or someone who will kind of let go and say okay let's negotiate let's uh, let's do something differently so if you think about just the two persons having some kind of argument and they kind of not uh, uh, coming to any kind of resolution then only way is for one person to say okay this entire argument is not important I'll just let go and let him win so that's fine when it's a question about words uh, and no one gets harmed but when you think about sacrificing your own life then it's quite difficult in Eastern religion uh, they have similar theme about necessity of person to sacrifice his own life for a greater good so through the history you will find handful of people who are willing to sacrifice their own life you have Martin Luther King you have Gandhi and well uh, above all you have uh, Jesus Christ who sacrificed 
his own life to show the people his own beliefs. But not, that's not the all. Like uh, when I said you can't kill, you can't even think about killing is just think about Jesus. He was a like son of God. So he had the power to say, God, wipe them all out and end the story because that was godly power. But he decided, no, I don't want to do that. I will let them kill me. Think about that. So Christ's teaching is a path, path toward light in one way or another. We learn to live together or we all die.